Muy buenos días a todas las personas que están conectadas en este momento. Mi nombre es Camila Flores, yo hago parte del equipo de Consejería Académica y Relaciones Internacionales y hoy estaremos realizando un webinar con Queen Mary University of London. Quería contarles que hoy nos acompaña Andy Durban, quien estará realizando la presentación el día de hoy. Y antes eh, de comenzar, quería contarles que con esta universidad tenemos varios convenios de los cuales Andy estará hablando a profundidad durante la presentación, pero un poco por encima, en la Facultad de Humanidades y Ciencias Sociales eh, se otorga una beca del 100% para un beneficiario en programa de PhD y un 20% de descuento en el valor de la matrícula para todos los estudiantes en programas de maestría de un año. En la Facultad de Ciencia e Ingeniería hay dos becas del 100% para dos beneficiarios en programas de PhD y 20% de descuento en el valor de la matrícula para todos los estudiantes. En la Facultad de Medicina y Odontología un 20% de descuento en el valor de la matrícula para todos los eh, beneficiarios en programas de maestría de un año. Y ya eh, Andy estará hablando un poco más acerca de los requisitos para tener en cuenta. Andy, thank you so much for being here. Welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Very pleased to be here. That's right. You can now start the presentation. Okay, right, yeah. So I'm going to turn my, my video off because um, it puts me off looking at my own face all the time. So I'm going to ask you to, uh, to look at the, uh, the presentation instead. So bear with me. Now, can you all see that? Can you see that? Can yes. Uh -huh. All right. Okay, so, well, yeah, we'll, we'll get going. I'll, I'll try not to um, kind of go, go over. I'll, I'll aim to talk for an absolute maximum of about 30 uh, minutes, and then there'll be uh, kind of plenty of time for, for questions at the end. So, yeah, thank you again so much for, for having me. Um, we're, we're so proud to be partners of uh, the Colfaturo Initiative. Um, it's an absolute pleasure to be able to speak to uh, some potential uh, scholarship uh, recipients here today. Um, so just to introduce myself properly, my name is Andy Durbin. Uh, thank you for the introduction, uh, Camilla. I am Deputy Head of uh, International Recruitment um, here at, uh, at Queen Mary uh, University of London. So, um, right, yes. So just a, uh, just to quickly sort of take you through what I'm going to talk about today, I, I will start with a very, very quick overview of why uh, sort of UK education is 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 a good choice, and why the UK education system is a good um, a good idea for you to be thinking about for your postgraduate or, or PhD study. Um, I will then move on to uh, my favourite part, of course, which is why you should choose uh, Queen Queen Mary University of London. The uh, the special things about uh, our institution. Uh, I will talk about uh, the postgraduate and PhD uh, opportunities that we have on offer. I will talk about the entrance requirements, what you would need in order to gain access to those programs. I will talk about the fees, but then also, of course, um, the Cold Futuro initiative and how that, how you would be able to take advantage of that to study with us. Uh, I will talk about how to apply and then, then we'll throw it open to you guys for, for questions. So um, if you do have any questions, obviously just um, just type them in the in, in the box and then we can we can get them all to the get to them all at the end. All right, so just sort of kicking off um, the UK education system. Uh, so hopefully you are kind of you know sort of aware of, of, of you know UK education and, and, and our university system, but it remains you know one of the one of the most well recognized education systems in the world. Uh, we are consistently the most well, one of the most uh, popular uh, destinations for international students to study in. Uh, it's, it's normally we're up there with, you know, the likes of the, the United States and, and Australia for, for people to come and want to study with us. The, the universities in the, the UK are amongst the, the leading in the world in, in terms of the research that is, that is carried out within them. And as a student at the, the, the universities, you very much have access to that. Um, you know, you're able to be part of an institution that is really at the cutting edge of a, a lot of academic fields and be taught by academics who really are uh, at the forefront of their, their subjects. Um, in the UK, the masters, um, well, the, the um, MAs and the MSCs tend to, to be perhaps a bit shorter and more flexible than some of the other 
uh, country system. So we uh, currently, it, it takes, it's normally the, the length is about uh, a year, one year for the uh, master's programs. It can be a bit longer if you build in some work experience or uh, industrial uh, elements of the program, or it could be a little bit shorter, but these shorter programs allow you to, to get your education completed and get yourself back into the employment market in a, in a, in a, in a condensed period of time. I think I'm pretty, yeah, I can, I can say this with absolute certainty, you know, if you decide to come to, to study in the UK, you're going to be in an extremely cosmopolitan and very multicultural learning environment, particularly in London um, as well. London is the, has the largest number of international students uh, in, in, any, in any city in the world. Um, I think the, the, the location of, of England, you know, being in Europe, you know, in, in the middle of, well, in the middle of the world, if you like, so equidistant between, you know, lots of Asian countries and, and the Americas means that you're really going to get a, a, a massively cosmopolitan experience in your learning environment and really get to kind of open your minds and your horizons. Um, price wise, we tend to be a little bit more affordable than, for example, the, the United States uh, is, is just one example for our master's programs. Uh, hopefully the, the cost of our master's programs are a little bit more in that kind of affordability bracket. I shall talk about this a bit later, of course. Um, <coughs> excuse me. In the UK, we, uh, we put a lot of emphasis on, on industrial placements and practical experience. This is built into a lot of our programs. Uh, some of our master's programs are actually two years because they, they incorporate a, a year in industry as well. We have a lot of opportunities. I, won't, I will talk, I have a slide about this a little bit later where we provide a lot of support to you focusing on your, uh, your career after you graduate. So it's not just about giving you those academic skills, but it's giving you the skills that you're gonna need in order to progress and be successful in your, your career. English is obviously uh, a big part of it. So I'm sure your English is, is excellent already, but if you immerse yourself in uh, an English speaking environment and study for a year, you, you're gonna really improve and, and really end up as a, a fluent speaker at the end of your study. And then last but not least, of course, <coughs> excuse me, there is the social aspect. So, you know, the, the fun aspect of coming to be an international student, you know, getting involved in the sports, the music, the, the, the culture, you know, making friends. It's, it's an experience as well, not just, you know, it's not just all about what you learn and what you get out of it in terms of your career. So my, obviously, I'm now going to talk about my institution, which I love talking about. So why, all right, hopefully you've decided that you want to come and study in the UK, but why should you choose Queen Mary? So I'm going to give you a bit of a history lesson now. So we're a, we are a, a very well established institution so we can uh, uh, trace our, our history back to the medieval period in, in London when our first hospital which is still part of us was formed. Um, we've always, we actually started off as a, as a medical school basically uh, and obviously we still have a huge medical school um, but that's kind of where everything has grown from. Uh, in 1785 is, is the buildings that we still uh, use were first kind of built and, and founded. Um, if you can see my, my um, mouse here, we then uh, became Westfield College. We opened a massive kind of exhibition and teaching space called the People's Palace. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, University of London, which is a big federal institution of, of London universities. So, you know, LSE, King's, UCL, part of the same institution. Uh, and then we became a proper university in our own right in, in 1934. So that's a pretty, pretty sort of impressive history for a, a London university. Obviously, there are a lot of institutions in the, the UK that have, uh, you know, similarly, um, you know, long and, and storied backgrounds. So we do have a good reputation in the UK. So uh, we're part of the Russell Group. You may or may not be aware of what that is, but probably if I was going to compare it to something uh, you know, if you compare it with the UK and uh, the USA, you know, they have the Ivy League, well, we have the Russell Group. So this is a group of around sort of 25 to 30 institutions in the UK, which are uh, considered part of the elite. So we are, you know, in part of that grouping, we are, um, a reason why we are part of that group is because of our um, excellent uh, research output. So most of these rankings here, we obviously do very well in the ranking tables generally. Um, I think these, these three come from the Times Higher uh, Education Rankings. Uh, 
there is a new ranking out this coming Monday, so we're looking forward to that. Um, and this we're very proud of as well, fifth in the UK for research. So every uh, five years in the UK, they do a big, the government does a big research um, standard uh, kind of evaluation. Uh, and last time we came fifth in the UK, so just behind uh, you know, the likes of Imperial and, and, and Oxford and, and, uh, and Cambridge. Um, so we're very proud of that as well. So we really, you know, the, the, the research that we put out there into the world is of, is of the best quality. Um, and we also have some, some really good alumni, as you can see, we currently have nine uh, Nobel Prize winners and, uh, and counting, hopefully. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so you're, you're gonna find this, to be honest, um, with any, any you know, good uh, university in the, in the UK is gonna be an incredibly international cohort. So in terms of our, our overall amount of students, 27,000, that makes us pretty, pretty large, actually, for, for a UK uh, university. But our figures for international students are just uh, pretty, pretty enormous, really, when you think about how many students that we have. So 35% of them are from what we call overseas, which is um, you know, not part of the EU, it's from, from elsewhere. We have a huge amount of nationalities represented. Currently, we have about uh, around sort of 25 to 30 Colombians, I believe, studying with us, most of them postgraduate. Um, uh, it, it's not really kind of much of an undergraduate market for us yet in Colombia, but hopefully that will, will improve. Um, we do currently, we, sort of 9% of our students are from the EU. We hope to obviously retain as many as we can. Uh, that might become a little bit less uh, over the, the coming years for, for obvious reasons, but we expect to uh, be making that up with a larger um, amount of overseas students. So incredibly diverse uh, students uh, body that we have. Now, this is pretty, um, pretty unique actually for, for a London institution. So I've, I've actually been working, um, I've been working in higher education for well, my whole career for about uh, sort of 15, over 15 years. I've worked for about five different uh, universities, all of them in, in London. Um, and I must say that Queen Mary is the, it, it does stand out because it's, it's very, very, it's extremely central uh, in the city of London. Uh, but it is very much a, a campus university at the same time. So it, it's, it's all very self-contained. Um, so everything is just on one space. So you have the career center. I'm going to come on to that in a second. You know, you've got the gyms, you've got the, the bars, the restaurants, shops, you know, your health, obviously all of your teaching and learning spaces and the libraries, the student union, you know, the pastoral support is all on this one, this, this one self-contained uh, space, which I'm going to show you a, a few pictures of it in, in a second. Now, this is, this is hugely important, uh, I think, for, for all of you. Like, you're, you're, you're making a really important choice if you're thinking about studying in, uh, at a postgraduate level. Now, obviously, you know, the major motivator for um, getting a postgraduate qualification um, is to, you know, further your career. What is it going to do for your professional uh, career? Um, and we have an entire department that is, is kind of dedicated into focusing on that um, in conjunction with your academic learning. So, you know, it's not just about, you know, hitting the books and then, you know, and then you've got your qualification and that's great. It's about where it's going to lead you. So while you're studying, we have, uh, you're able to kind of come and see the careers team whenever you want. We can help you with the job search. We can help you with uh, internships. We can help you with industrial experience. All through the year, we have a lot of, um, uh, recruitment fairs that occur on our campus where the major employers uh, come to try to recruit our students. Obviously being in the middle of London is also very helpful for that. Um, we can help you with your own skills. So we could help you with, uh, you know, upgrading your CV or with job applications or with soft skills like presentation skills and things like that. You get access to jobs boards. Um, we can help you with your actual job, job search. If you're entrepreneurial minded, we can help you navigate that as well. So you've got this whole kind of toolbox that you can really access during the, the course of your study to, to be looking beyond that year and, and okay, where am I going next? And actually we've had some very good news uh, recently. We have the, uh, the graduate visa, um, which is just coming in for people that are starting, uh, starting to study with us this September. Uh, once you graduate, you'll get a guaranteed two years to remain in the UK uh, to, to search for work. But, you know, of course, if that's what you want to, want to do. So that's very, very good news. Um, as a university, we have very, very good uh, graduate prospects, really, really strong uh, levels of, of students employed within, within six months. 
um, graduates from Russell Group universities do earn more on average. So, you know, rightly or wrongly, uh, the, the reputation of the university does go a long way in that, in that sense. Um, I've just covered the careers office as well. Uh, we can help with internship uh, opportunities. We have great links to industry, industry as well. And a lot of our master's programs actually do in, include uh, kind of links uh, and, and professional work experience to industry. And a really good um, testimonial here from one of our PhDs. Now, uh, being sort of where we are, right in the centre of uh, London, we have a lot of events going on. This was a recent one. We it's come to our campus. This massive here is, is called the, uh, the People's Palace. I'm just going to turn off my Microsoft Teams because um, people are sending me loads of messages. Hang on. Um, yeah, so we have Bill Gates uh, coming to uh, visit us. We've had uh, Michael Fole, he's a British a astronaut he visited last year. Rory Stewart was a London mayoral candidate. We have festivals, we have uh, all sorts of things actually going on in campus. Um, and it's really kind of like a hub for the local community as well, because it's right there in the centre of, uh, uh, of East London. But we're very proud of this space. It's called the People's Palace. Uh, this is where you would actually be graduating uh, as, as well as a successful student. Excuse me. So um, obviously there's the social aspect and, and for a lot of people it's uh, one of the most uh, important aspects of, of international study. Um, you have the student unions, though in the UK, in every university in the, in the UK, you have the students union, which is basically responsible for uh, running all of the kind of the sports, the pastoral stuff, the uh, social stuff. It's for students and it's run by students. So loads of sporting opportunities to get involved in, over 100 sports clubs, including if you're an elite athlete, we have provision for you there. Loads of clubs and societies that you can join. I've obviously picked the uh, Iberian and Latin American Society. That's a very popular society for people from uh, Latin American countries and Spain and, and just those who speak Spanish as well. Um, but then you've got you know, diverse topics such as Harry Potter, cheese and knitting. Um, there's also, uh, you know, the student union are also very much um, involved in running a lot of the, uh, the, the entertainment. Um, so you've actually got young people that are in charge of the entertainment and not old people like me. So um, it means that they're, you know, it's hopefully going to be something that's going to be interesting to you. Right. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm just going to talk a bit now um, about where we are. Okay. So I, uh, apologies if, um, if lots of you have got familiarity with, with London, but I, I'm going to assume that, that you don't. So obviously we're in London, we're in the capital city of, of the UK. This right here, this picture is, is a view of, from one of the top of our teaching buildings. And right here, you might be familiar with these landmarks. This is like the, this is like the city of London uh, right here, which is like the business district of, of London. So we're in the east, east side of the city. <clears throat> kind of beyond here, like where my, my arrow is, is, is where you would find, you know, things like Buckingham Palace and the, you know, the, the West End and things like this. Um, and this is an even better picture. So this is, this is basically like our, our main campus right here. It's in, in an area called Mile End. So it's very, very close to, to the centre of London. And here is, the, um, here is the Whitechapel Hospital, which is where, of our, where most of our, uh, our doctors are doing their, their training. Now here again is, is this, um, uh, the, the city of London that I passed, I, I pointed out earlier. So this area right here, it, they call it the city, which is basically, this was London in, in Roman times. So this is where the, the old city walls were and it's now become like the major bis business district uh, of, of London. Here is the Shard. Uh, so this is like London Bridge area uh, and the South Bank. And over here you have like the, the touristy parts of London. And then just here, just off kind of screen, you have Canary Wharf, which is another big kind of business area with, within the city. So, but also you can see right here, we have all these lovely kind of green spaces. We have a nice canal that goes along here. So it's an absolutely fantastic, uh, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, um, absolutely fantastic uh, location for you to, to be studying and absolutely brilliantly connected. This is a bit of a, a more close up view. So this is like the, the left hand side of the campus. And now you can see Canary Wharf here. So you can see that really just how close we are, um, you know, really into the, to the centre of the city. But this is all of this, a lot of the student accommodation here. And then here you have like a canal, it's called, the, I think it's the Grand Union Canal, uh, kind of running by the accommodation and a, a lovely park here. It's called Mile End Park. So, you know, everything's in kind of one space, but you're right 
you know, bang in the, in the centre of the city. Now this is London's uh, transport map, uh, London's tube map. So where my arrow is, we are here. We are in Mile End, number one. And number two is our hospital. And uh, three and four is where our, some of our legal buildings are based. So obviously we have, Queen Mary has one of the best legal law schools in, in the world. Um, and this is very much the, the legal district of, of London here. Chancery Lane, kind of Fleet Street area where the, the Royal Courts of Justice are. So we have more uh, learning spaces and teaching spaces here. <clears throat> and you can see just how well connected we are. Um, obviously, you know, we have an airport, uh, London City Airport is, uh, where is it? It's here. Uh, we have Heathrow over here. Uh, we have, you know, really the centre of the city. We're in, we're, um, London is divided into about six or seven transport zones and we're in zone two here. Uh, and London, you know, the transport network is is just uh, one of the, the best in the world. It's uh, There is no need to, to own a car or anything like that. You can get around uh, uh, very, 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 very easily. Uh, just a few pictures of, of some of the kind of amenities uh, nearby to us. So uh, we hosted the Olympics um, only eight years ago. It seems like a lot longer than eight years ago, to be honest, because so much has, has happened since then. But yeah, just eight years ago, we had the Olympics and we have... Uh, a lot, of, uh, a lot of facilities still kind of um, obviously stemming from that. Um, this is a lovely area that is very, very nearby to campus. We have Westfield Shopping Centre is also very nearby in Stratford. It's one of the largest shopping centres in, in Europe. And then we have the city, especially for those of you who are, who are thinking about uh, studying courses in you know, business, economics, finance, etc. Um, being so close to this hub, uh, <coughs> excuse me, of, of business and commerce and finance and startups and technology is also very, very helpful uh, to be uh, kind of studying here if you're a student. We all, we're also very, very nearby to Shoreditch and, and Hackney. So this is like the trendy area of London. So obviously I, you, won't, you will not find me there. Uh, so, you know, this is where all of the artists and all of the cool people and all of the musicians and things, and they are, they are kind of um, uh, doing their thing uh, very, very nearby to the campus. And so this is a, there's, there's a, a huge load of um, kind of youth culture that you can get yourself involved in, which is very, very nearby to the campus as well. Um, if you just Google Shoreditch and, and Hackney, you'll, you'll see what I mean. And then outside of that, we've got a load of, you know, kind of traditional culture. <coughs> London is an eight, excuse me, London is an ancient city. It has a huge amount of, um, you know, culture to experience, you know, whether that's museums, whether that's historical sites, uh, you know, libraries, um, exhibitions. Uh, it, it's just an absolutely fantastic place. You never get bored of, uh, of being in London. So, uh, you know, you can, you can obviously, you know, you can do the, uh, the traditional uh, tourist uh, type activities, of course, uh, once you're, you're here in, in, in London. Uh, theatre as well, we have uh, in, the, in the West End, uh, the, it should hopefully by the time, you know, we, uh, you guys get here, everything should be, you know, starting up and back to normal again after COVID-19. Uh, we're seeing a lot of things starting to open up now, um, kind of culture and, and theatre wise. Obviously, some of the leading productions are, are obviously staged here in London. This is a very, very posh restaurant. This is the one that is actually in the Shard. Um, so you might, might not be uh, eating in, in this sort of uh, establishment, but uh, London as well, you know, has one of the, the highest kind of concentrations of, um, uh, of, you know, restaurants and bars and, and nightclubs as, as well, of, 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 uh, more than any other kind of city in the world. And London is, uh, has a, a, an enormous amount of uh, beautiful green space as well. So um, even though you're in the you know, middle of a, a really you know, bustling metropolis, there's always a, a lovely kind of quiet park uh, that you're able to escape to. One thing I would say as well is that you're in England as well, which has, uh, you're never more than a couple of hours away on a train from uh, you know, open countryside and, and even you know, the rest of Europe as well is always, always open to you if you just need a little bit of a, uh, a break you know, from the hectic uh, hustle uh, of, of, of London as a city. And last but not least, uh, London is a, a, a hub for sports. So this is uh, Wembley Stadium in the north of the, uh, the capital. Um, those of you who might be uh, interested in football, um, so we are here, Queen Mary is, is here in Mile End. We're probably closest to West Ham, uh, but also all of these, these are just the premiership clubs that are in, in the UK. Crystal Palace is, is my club, so you, um, I, I recommend that you go and have a, have a catch a game here. That's very nearby, Charlton, West Ham. 
uh, Arsenal, Tottenham, and then of course Chelsea and Fulham there in the, in the West. And it's very, very easy to come by these type of um, tickets as long as you uh, you know uh, book uh, far enough uh, in advance. Right, so we've covered Queen Mary, we've covered uh, London, we've covered the, the experience. Let's, let's take a quick look now at the master's programmes that we, we have on offer. Now, I'm not going to spend too, too long on this because um, I, I could literally be speaking for hours and hours about all of the, the programmes that we offer and I'm not sure you know, what everyone is actually interested in. Uh, so I'll just give a, a, a brief overview. So we are divided into three faculties. Uh, humanities and social sciences, science and engineering, and then the medicine and, and dentistry uh, school. And then the law school is, is here within social sciences and the uh, you know, business uh, and, and economics, etc. In fact, I can show you this on the next uh, page. So within those faculties, we are divided up into 19 different schools. I would say for Colombians, uh, probably we're seeing most people here in business and management, economics and finance, maybe a bit of international relations as well. We have a lot of students on um, uh, engineering type uh, students, either material science or uh, electronic engineering and computer science. Um, but I would say probably by, by quite some distance, probably law is, is, is the most uh, popular uh, program that I, that I normally see uh, for, for Colombian students. And I have actually uh, prepared, uh, I had a very, very quick look earlier um, at the, the, the type of applications and enrolments that we've been seeing from Columbia. Uh, and yeah, right out in front was, was our, our one year LLM program. So things like commercial and corporate law, intellectual property, etc. Um, I really, you know, I don't need to stress how, how well regarded our, our law school is in, in, in the country and in the world. Um, but then we've also seen a lot of uh, Colombians join our, uh, you know, accounting and management, public health, international relations, artificial intelligence with the experience as well, uh, biomedical engineering. This was, these were the, the next most popular ones that I could find. Um, so really, a, you know, a, a real mix and there is a, a lot open to you. And then, of course, within these schools, it, you know, it's a little bit different in terms of PhDs because uh, obviously PhDs are, are what you would actually be you know, uh, kind of proposing to us, it's, uh, as I'm sure you know, you know, we don't really have a, you know, a selection of uh, PhDs sort of on offer. It's more what you can kind of match yourself with. But uh, we would expect them to be in, in you know, these, these kind uh, type of fields. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, the, the entrance requirements, um, and this is, this is for master's programs, um, and forgive my absolutely awful uh, Spanish um, accent, um, but licenciado um, on whatever the subject happens to be, or titulo de whatever the subject happens to be, are both fine. Uh, so we can accept both of those type of um, qualifications. We normally, for the score, and you can tell me if this doesn't make, make sense, um, uh, you know, when we have the question and answer, um, but we normally require about 3.50 3 for your score or above. It depends on the program. Um, IELTS, you know, you'll need to have done something like an IELTS or a TOEFL or, a, uh, you know, if maybe if you've studied in, in the States or somewhere like that, that, that could be okay. So you're going to need an English language qualification. You don't necessarily have to have it at the point of applying. Uh, and we do accept alternative uh, English language qualifications. Um, so this is just a very... Um, uh, kind of broad idea of what we would be, you know, very basic idea of what we'd be asking for. Um, some programs might ask for something a little bit more specialised. So, for example, in the engineering programmes, we might ask that you had studied, uh, you know, a particular subject at, at undergraduate level and, and uh, scored particularly uh, highly in, you know, in, in certain subjects like mathematics or something like that. But this is just a general guide. The fee will depend uh, you know, upon the program, but normally for master's programs, they're in the region of about 20 to 25,000 pounds for the year. Now that is just for your tuition, and then you need to be cost funding your cost of living in London. Now, unfortunately, London isn't the most expensive, uh, isn't the, the cheapest of cities. Normally anything between sort of like 1,000 to, you know, 1,500 pounds per month will, will see you through. Uh, it depends on what, you know, how you're living, you know, what, what style of living you are undertaking. So if you're very, very careful with your money, you can keep your costs down, but you really should be kind of budgeting for that sort of amount to, to see you through. 
Um, now housing is, uh, we, we think is pretty competitive. So your accommodation, we can offer that from a minimum of 130 pounds per, per week for the more basic to uh, 210 pounds per week for the, uh, the, the more opulent. We're very, very proud of our relationship with uh, Colfatura. Uh, so we have been partners uh, since 2015. Um, we, uh, we recently in 2018 expanded uh, the amount of programs that were eligible for the Colfatura, sorry, Colfatura uh, um, uh, funding. Uh, so every year we give three PhD awards and, and unlimited master's awards. Um, you're probably aware that the scholarship can be up to $50,000 over, over two years. Those students who are in receipt of the Colfaturo scholarship also get a 20% discount on our master's programs. And if you're doing a PhD program, there is no fee. So you, we would expect you to use the Colfaturo scholarship to fund your living expenses. So hopefully that makes sense, but you, 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 can, you can ask me about this at the, the end. Um, so you have plenty of time uh, to, to apply to us. Uh, applications close uh, on the 28th of February next year for next September. How do you, I'm nearly finished, don't worry. Um, so how do you apply? Um, it's very, very straightforward. Uh, you, you complete the process online. You have lots of, you have plenty of time until, until you need to do this, obviously. Um, there's an application form that you would complete. Uh, you would upload your degree transcripts uh, and your certificate if you have it. Um, obviously, if you haven't finished your degree, that's fine. You know, you just give us your transcripts. <clears throat> we'll normally ask for at least one referee, which we would expect for master's students to be an academic, uh, but you could use professional in some cases as well. We'll need a statement of purpose as well, you know, uh, talking about, you know, why us and, and why this program and, and your motivations behind wanting to join us. A CV and a resume is helpful. Uh, and then, of course, the English language certificate. Like I say, you do not have to have that at the point of applying, uh, but we would obviously need that at some point before you joined us. Uh, I, I'll skip through this, really, because um, you, you don't really need to think about this now. But um, after you would receive your offer, you would then um, be eligible to receive um, kind of housing. Normally, if you've got your application in by a certain point, which uh, this year it was June, uh, we can guarantee you housing uh, on, on, you know, Queen Mary housing. Um, and then accommodation wise, we have 500 rooms for postgraduates. Uh, as I mentioned briefly earlier, uh, the fees range from about 130 to 205 pounds per week for a single room, which I'm, it is a lot, but you know, it is actually quite competitive for, for London. Um, and that cost is, you know, you pay that, you don't have to worry about anything else, you know, it covers everything, it covers your Wi-Fi, it's kind of like a, almost like a hotel type arrangement. Um, and most of the accommodation as well will include uh, ensuite bathrooms and uh, you would just be sharing the, the kitchen normally. Uh, and also some of the, uh, the accommodation plans include, uh, include uh, uh, meals and, and food. And again, uh, I took this from another presentation, but we don't really need to get into this now. Um, you, we would also, you know, once you had an offer, we would help you uh, through the visa application process. We have our own team who, was, uh, who, who are responsible for this uh, and would be able to kind of support you in, in that regard in, in terms of making sure everything was okay uh, for you getting your visa that you would need to come and study with us. And finally, working in the UK, <coughs> excuse me, during your studies, um, under the terms of your visa, you would be able to permit it, you would be allowed uh, to work for a min maximum of 20 hours per week. And a lot of master's students do do that uh, in order to subsidise their, their studies. Um, and then, of course, we have the uh, fantastic news that from 2021, summer 21, when people start graduating from their uh, programmes, um, you will actually receive another visa which will allow you to, to stay in the, in the UK for a period of two years um, if that's what you want to do uh, in order to, to search for, for more work. Uh, I'll leave this up at the end, uh, a, few, um, a few useful links for you and uh, uh, contacts. You can get directly in touch with me. Uh, there's my email there, it's a.durban uh, at qmul.ac.uk. We also have an America's uh, inbox or you can get in touch with me through uh, Colfaturo through, through Camilla or anyone there, I'd be very, very happy to, to help you out with any, any, um, uh, anything I can. So thank you so much for listening um, and for paying uh, attention to me. I've been droning on for ages, so um, I'll put my video on again. And if anyone has any questions, I'll be very, very happy to, uh, to answer.
Thank, Thank you so much for the presentation, Andy. We will now be doing the Q&A. The first question is from Juan, and he wants to know the average educational costs and fees and information about loans and financial aid. Hmm. Yeah, okay, so um, so it depends on the on the programme, on the master's programme. So um, just uh, as I, I very briefly covered uh, there, so it depends on the on the master's programme, but it's normally in the region of about 20 to 25,000 uh, uh, pounds to study in, in tuition. Um, and then um, on top of that, you need to budget for your cost of living as well, which in, in London is normally uh, kind of anything between 1,000 to uh, one and a half thousand pounds per, per week, um, you know, to, to cover your accommodation and your cost of living. Um, in terms of um, loans and, and bursaries, well, we encourage students to apply for the, you know, the, the Cold Futuro loan, which is a, an absolutely fantastic opportunity for Colombian students. Um, we have an unlimited number of master's places available for these students. Um, I believe, as I, uh, I'm not, I don't have, must admit, I don't have huge familiarity with it, but I believe um, uh, that the award can be up to 50,000 uh, US dollars, uh, and then that can go towards your tuition uh, and also your cost of living. So that would quite comfortably cover your, your tuition for, for a standard master's program and also leave you with hopefully quite, quite enough, well, you know, a significant amount to, to cover your living expenses as well. So it really is accessible, uh, you know, under, under this scheme to come and study with us. Thank you. The next question is from Paola. And when does the application process open for 2021 LLM? And does the application have a fee? And does the application have a fee? Have a fee, ah, right. Uh, no, I don't believe there is an application fee. No, not like some institutions. <clears throat> and I think we will open, um, normally it's around sort of mid-October uh, for the following September. Uh, make sure that you get your application in by the end of February because that's the Col, uh, Col Futuro deadline. Great. Mario is asking, the open references are considered as strong as the references uploaded by the referee? Um, uh, so, sorry, the, which, um, would you mind repeating that? The open references? Yeah, the open references are considered as strong as the reference uploaded by the reference. Oh, I, see, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, we, yes. Um, so as long as they're kind of, they don't, you know, sort of necess it, it's better um, if they are actually kind of referencing, you know, our particular program and our, our university. I would, I would say that holds more weight, especially for the, um, you know, for the more competitive programs, especially in the, in the school of, of law. Um, excuse me, but we can, we can accept open references as, as, as well. Um, if possible, though, I would try and get a, a more kind of dedicated um, reference, if you, if you can, that was actually submitted by the referee themselves. Okay, the next one is from Carolina and she's asking, I saw on your webpage you're opening a later start on January 2021. Yes. How would it work? <clears throat> Yeah. So, okay. So that's that's sort of uh, to to do with uh, the COVID nineteen situation, really, which which I haven't really covered here um, because uh, you know maybe we we were kind of looking more towards sort of September. But yeah. So what what we've done today uh, today uh, this year is uh, a, a couple of things in order to to combat the the situation with COVID nineteen. So the first thing is for the students that are starting in September. Um, we are not insisting that they actually come to join us on campus. We are uh, actually running our programs in uh, online as well as in person so it's like a blended format um, you know students are, if they're able to join us that's great you know our campus is open but if not if they were still kind of locked down not able to get out of the country they could start their, their programs um, um, uh, online but what we are also doing uh, is for our postgraduate programs for about 30 of them for the, for the most popular ones uh, we are actually giving them another, a later start date of, of January. So we are hoping to just run those as normal in person, uh, but just later, uh, you know, and again, uh, you know, uh, beyond uh, September. And that includes actually most of our LLMs. Uh, so this is, uh, and this is so that we can give people more of an opportunity to join this year uh, and not miss too much of the, you know, not have to wait until next September. 
So that is an option uh, as well. I don't think you would be able to, I don't think it would be covered under Confituro, uh, but if you were really desperate to join us this uh, January, then, then we do have about 30, 30 of our, our most popular master's programs still open. Thank you. The next question is from um, Laura and she's saying, does the university accept an academic reference from the boss in the internship? Yes, uh, so if you've done an, an internship, yeah, um, your supervisor during the, in, the, the internship would, uh, would be very much acceptable, yes. Um, if you've been studying in the, in the last five years though, uh, we would also hope to see um, an academic reference. <clears throat> okay, the next one is from David and he says, if you're studying a full-time master, is it possible to get a job? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yes. Um, so uh, I would say a very large proportion of our students do do that. Um, so as I, um, I think sort of said briefly in the, the presentation, <coughs> excuse me, under the terms of your visa, uh, you would be allowed to work for up to 20 hours uh, per week in, in, in the UK. Um, being in London, there's, there's loads of opportunities to, to you know, to, add, to hold down a part time job in, in retail or, you know, in a, in a restaurant or a bar or actually on campus. So yes, absolutely. A lot of students do that uh, in order to um, subsidize their, their cost of living during, during their study. Great. Edwin is asking, should the PhD applicant seek the supervisor? Yes. Yeah. So if you want to, uh, please, because PhD is, is, is more of a kind of specialized uh, recruitment process. But yes, that's normally the, 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 the way it's done. And you write us a research proposal. Um, uh, was it David is very, very welcome to get in touch with me uh, if he wants any more kind of help or advice in terms of the, uh, the application process for PhD, because I know I didn't really cover it there. For sure. Manuel is asking, can you give us your email? Yes, certainly. Um, so my email is here. It's uh, a.durban at qmul.ac.uk. Uh, so get straight in touch with me. I'm the uh, I'm, I'm deputy head of the the office, but I also manage the uh, the Americas. Um, I was hoping to come to Colombia uh, like this autumn, but that's obviously not going to happen. But hopefully, I'll be there next year as well. So yeah, get in touch with me, uh, and we can have like a one one on one chat. Very very happy to help you. That'd be awesome. And for the last question is from Camila, and she's asking, can I apply without having the reference? the references and the aisle and can I submit it later? Yes, uh, you, you can. Um, you, you can submit like your application before before a deadline, um, you know, to, to, to make sure that you've lodged it and then we can take the, the references later, yes. Although you're unlikely to actually get a decision until we've seen those, those references. Okay, Andy, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for doing the presentation and for thank answering you. all of the questions. I don't it's know if you want to pleasure. say, thank you. Do you want to say something else before finishing the webinar? No, not at all. It's just, thank you so much for your time. It's been, been great to see quite, quite a lot of you here. So um, yeah, just, just get in touch with me and we hope to see you uh, at Queen Mary. For sure. Thank you so much okay. for being here. Gracias a todas las personas que se conectaron. Que tengan un muy buen día. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.